Alright, bueno said a good evening. What's poppin'? It's your boy Big Rich, Mob Stories. You know how we do. Fresh off the streets of Queens, feeling really, really good. It's a good night for me tonight. Everything is going according to plan. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people got my name in their mouth, but that's how it's supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? You know. If people ain't talking about you, that's you know, then you ain't doing something right. But you know how we do before we conduct business. Salute to everybody that listens in. Salute to Dublin, my man Sean. Salute to you, sir, Glasgow Rangers. Salute to everybody that leaves comment, you know, leave comments in the section. Blow some smoke in the air. Let me know what you're smoking on. Tonight, uh, this week's shows will be uh, sponsored by Pineapple Express and White Tahoe Cookies and, of course, Red Velvet and Cactus Flower Live Resin. So if you guys smoke, do what we do best and bless the atmosphere. Have no fear. Big Rich is here. Let's get it popping down to business. Let's go. It's just a long story. I may do it in one part, maybe do it in two. I don't know. I'm going to let you know. It's going to be a mystery. Let's get it popping. Salute to Ed Scarpo of CosaNostraNews.com. Go check out the website. We throw respect on your name, and then we dabble a little bit of respect on top of the respect on the website. Go check it out. Anybody seen Detroit City? Let's keep it moving. The Genovese family has tapped a long-time, largely unknown veteran to service or assist in various capacities. The official boss of the organization, which has been described as the most powerful mafia family in the United States. Michael Mickey Ragusa, 54, a longtime confidant of boss Liborio Barney Bellomo, who has built an extremely low profile over the years, is allegedly the Genovese family's new street boss. The streets have learned. Genovese street bosses have been known to relay the boss's orders to family capos and soldiers, as well as personally divert away from the boss any incoming fire, figuratively and literally, from the likes of law enforcement, potential enemies, and the unforgiving, relentless New York City media. Hailing from Pleasantville, Ragusa was promoted recently through the formal appointment may have been largely ceremonial. Ragusa was already a soldier when he was nabbed along with the several powerful members of the Genovese family in the big 2002 bus involving the mafia's infiltration of the International Longshoremen's Association. Belomo is official boss of the crime family, founded circa 1931 by Charles Lucky Luciano himself. As one law enforcement source said of Belomo, He's the reason why people from Brooklyn and the Bronx have been showing up in Lower Manhattan in the last few years. As per sources, Ragusa's elevation was prompted by and followed the death of Venerable. As per sources, Ragusa's elevation was prompted by and followed the death of longtime Lower East Side wise guy Peter P.D. Red Di Chiara on May 2nd, 2018 from complications of diabetes. Di Chiara has been a powerful Knickerbocker village capo who reportedly spent his last year serving the street boss and consigliere for Belomo. One source who requested anonymity told us he, Ragusa, took over for PD Red about four years ago and has been pretty low-key until lately. He is extremely close to Barney and has been for many years. The Genovese ILA case, a continuation of a 2001 indictment, focused on the Genovese family's control of the union to extort firms operating on the piers in the New York metro area and in Miami. The 40-page racketeering indictment has named Ernest Muscatella, then Genovese acting boss, Charles Tuzo, an alleged captain, Ragusa, Gigante, who was already in prison serving a 12-year stint for a 1997 conviction for racketeering, murder conspiracy, and related crimes, and Gigante's son, Andrew Gigante, an alleged associate who served as messenger between his father and longtime Genovese soldier, Pasquale Falsetti. A key member of the Genovese family's longtime waterfront racket, Falsetti, a.k.a. The Clubber, who was in the family's East Harlem crew and grew up with Sylvester Zotola, the Bonanza 
Toronto associate gunned down at a Bronx McDonald's drive through we covered that story, had been indicted in the same case in 2001, along with Belomo and Thomas Cafaro, an alleged associate and the son of Vincent Fish Cafaro, a one-time capo in the Genovese family and protege of former acting boss Anthony Fat Tony Salerno. Fish became a government witness after flipping in 1986. Gracias. According to 2002 indictment, Ragusa allegedly worked at a mobbed-up trade association representing drywall contractors and also held a no-show job at the Metropolitan Marine Maintenance Contractors Association. Salute to no-show jobs. Love those. Those are the best. The organization still exists and was named in a recent AFL-CIO lawsuit against the Waterfront Commission of New York Harbor. According to Waterfront Commission investigators, Metro, basically a trade association for New York Harbor's container repair business, was a joint enterprise of the N. Gambino families, which had created the an entity ostensibly to handle the container repair industry's collective bargaining with the ILA. Ragusa was released from prison in 2005 and apparently has been at liberty ever since. The 2002 case is remembered as the one that finally brought down the legendary Gigante, who the government had been targeting since the 1980s. Now deceased, one-time FBI supervisor John S. Pritchard III, a tenacious investigator whose law enforcement career spanned more than three decades and six agencies in New York, was among the first in law enforcement to focus on Chin. Gigante died in his sleep at age 77 in December 2005 in a federal prison hospital in Springfield, Missouri. He died in the same hospital where his longtime rival John Gotti died three years earlier. While facing indictment in the late 1980s, Gigante had selected Belemo as acting boss. The Bronx-based college-educated wise guy has made it to the top of his own and now rules the crime family. Also noted was the role of Petey Red, who was street boss or acting boss for Belomo, relaying messages to and from capos and important family soldiers. The the hide-the-ball strategy was practically invented by by the Genovese family. Gigante, taking a cue from predecessor Benny Squint Lombardo, had outwitted the law for years with strategic use of Anthony Fat Tony Salerno as front boss for the Klan. That was in addition to his crazy act. Gigante often wandered through the streets of Greenwich Village wearing a tattered bathrobe, unshaven, and seemingly in a mental ill stupor. The New York waterfront was a vast, immensely profitable domain for New York mafiosi for much of the 20th century. The loot of the entire world, everything from auto parts to perfume, steel to furs, passes through New York Harbor and is stored in the holds of the thousands of ships that docks and is stored in the holds of the thousands of ships that dock in Manhattan, Brooklyn, New Jersey, and Staten Island. On the topic of the waterfront, The great Village Voice journalist Tom Robbins noted, He who controlled the gangs of tough men with strong backs, who carried that cargo on and off the ships, won not only opportunities for massive theft and pilferage, he also won power over the timetables of arrival and departure on which giant corporations depended on which fortunes often rested. No wonder the union that arose among the waterside workers was the roughest and one of the most dominated by organized crime. When last identified by the feds, Liborio Barney Belomo street boss Michael Ragusa was notched as a soldier in the Genovese family's East Harlem Bronx crew. Some of the Genovese family's most storied and powerful wise guys also are were from the East Harlem Bronx crew, and many of them were nabbed around the same time in 2001-2002 in a complex, multifaceted case involving rackets and frauds and schemings revolving around the International Longshoremen's Association, which controlled the docks on the East Coast. The case itself was only a part of law enforcement's ongoing efforts to rest control of the New York area ports the hell away from the gangsters. The case saw the emergence of landmark testimony from hardcore wise guy George Barone, who flipped, 
Barone was an aging, ailing, battle-weary Hell's Kitchen gangster who was a powerful waterfront racketeer in the days when the mob ruled supreme on the city docks. Barone had been the consummate labor racketer and was tapped to oversee the ILA. Barone rose to the rank of vice president of the union and ran locals in New York and Miami. Barone had been an intimate confidant of Vito Genovese when fending off the non-union efforts of mob capo Carmine the Dr. Lombardozzi, who worked for Albert Anastasia, who Genovese viewed as a fierce rival. Barone and a pal founded the Jets, the street gang later immortalized in West Side Story. One of the crime family's most significant turncoats, Vincent Fish Cafaro, who flipped in 1986, also provided testimony. Scrazia. Special mention also must go to Michael Cookie Durso, he of the funny Rolex watch who wired up and helped the feds nail more than 70 key Genovese mobsters as part of the long simmering effort, which also netted many Gambino wise guys and helped end the reign of Gambino boss Peter Gotti. Disgrazia. Law enforcement sources called Durso an informant extraordinaire who recorded 500 tapes, literally thousands of hours of conversations. You fucking rat. During the case, the feds proved that Vincent Chin Gigante was still controlling the crime family from a faraway prison through his son, Andrew Gigante, who was three years into a 12-year hitch when he was hit with additional charges, courtesy of Dorso's Rolex, that assured he died behind bars. Fucking crazy. All right, first of all, really, really good article. Now, there's a lot more information to that article about the past, about the longshoremen, about the waterfronts. We'll get to that part of the story in a spotlight, but basically I just wanted to give you the main gist of the story, which was, uh, if you give me a second one, second right here, New Genovese Street Boss comes from the Mafia's most powerful crew. All right, so uh, great story, and again, we will get to the rest of that information, uh, which is part of this uh, article. Uh, again, uh, a lot, a lot of information about the past, uh, members that were hit with the RICO Act and stuff like that. So we will get to that as part of a, a special spotlight and uh, highlight all this information in a, a different video. But then again, straight up, great, great video, great information. Salute to Ed Scarpo. You know the team that brings it to you always. Mob stories. Like the video. Like the video. Like the video. And uh, we will definitely talk soon. Throw some smoke in the air. Don't have no fear and bless the atmosphere. Salute and we will talk soon.